Hi and welcome to the careers um, session on volunteering and developing volunteering opportunities to help you progress in your career. Firstly, thank you so much for joining us today. So as I mentioned, um, so I'm Lauren, I'm the activities of volunteering manager here at the Students' Union. But we've teamed up the career service to bring you live workshops, which we hope you'll find useful when planning the next steps of your career. Of course, leaving university and finding that next step that's right for you can be stressful at the best of times. And now with the global pandemic, I'm sure it is causing some of you a little bit of anxiety. Firstly, I want to say that's absolutely natural. But please remember, as a University of Leicester student, you're leaving with a fantastic degree and also a brilliant support service around you in terms of our career service here that can help you as both a student and an alumni. So as I mentioned previously, this session is all about volunteering. So many of you are probably already involved in volunteering because you want to make a positive change and just do something to really help your community. And that's brilliant and an absolute perfect reason to get involved in volunteering. But whilst you're out making change and having fun, you're developing a whole wealth of skills and experiences that are going to help you taking them first steps in your career and throughout that journey. So the whole aim of today's session is for those of you who are already volunteering, we want to help you understand how to best evidence them skills, whether that's on a CV or maybe in your first interview. And for those of you that maybe haven't got involved in volunteering yet, we're going to talk a lot about how you can get involved, whatever stage of your university journey you're in. So the format of today's session is going to be a Q&A. I'm joined by two fantastic panellists. But before we get into the q and I'll give them the opportunity to introduce themselves. So as I hand over, I'll tell you a little bit about who they are and what they're going to be bringing to today's session. So first of all, I'd like to hand over to Karen. Thanks, Lauren. Hello, everybody. Lovely to, to kind of see you here today. Um, so I'm from the Career Development Service and my role really in this session is to talk to you about your employability. So how can volunteering actually help you when it comes to thinking about maybe other things such as internships and placements and also about roles that you might want to consider as you pursue your degree and as you go into your graduate roles. Um, so that's my purpose here today. Um, be good to speak to you and I'll pass over to Michelle. Hi everyone, so I'm Michelle Lagar. I'm part of the student participation engagement team here at the University of Leicester. Um, I'm here on behalf of my colleagues um, who look after one, one off volunteering opportunities um, which you can take part in which make a difference to local causes in Leicester. Um, I'll be talking a little bit more about some of the opportunities that we're trying to, to arrange for the new staff term, um, but also just some of the work that we've done before as well. I'll pass over back to Lauren, thank you. Brilliant, thank you both. Really excited to hear what you bring to the conversation and excited to hear about their new opportunities as well. So as I said, we'll progress into the Q&A section. What I really want to stress to all of those who are watching is don't be afraid to ask your questions. There really is no such thing as a silly question and whatever you're asking now, whatever information we can give you is only going to help you on your next steps. So please use the Q&A section and fire away and I'm sure between us we'll be able to get you a good answer or let you know other services available that can help you. So we'll crack on to the Q&A section. First up, we have a question which is what sort of skills can I gain from volunteering? Um, I'll hand over to Karen first if you want to feed in on that. Yeah, yeah, Lauren. So, oh, lovely question. Um, there are numerous and varied skills. Um, obviously, there are those skills. So, for instance, if you were to get involved with maybe one of your local wildlife trusts or kind of more sort of, you know, the environment, then maybe those practical skills like dry stone walling or planting trees. Those things are great. Obviously, if you then are looking to pursue those sorts of um, career aspirations, so if you're looking to work in the environment and actually having practical skills will be really useful. The other types of skills that you'll often hear us talk about in the career service are those transferable skills. So it pretty much is what it says. It's skills that you develop in one arena that you can then use elsewhere. You're doing it all the time throughout your studies. Lots and lots of great skills, your communication, your team working. Volunteering can also offer you um, all of those. Obviously, it will depend on what you're going to be doing. If you're fundraising, working on communications, maybe you know, working on somebody's website and social media feeds, or whether or not you are actually actively going out into the community, 
you're going to be talking to people, maybe people you've never met before, diverse audiences. So how do you communicate with them? You know, that might be through how you talk to them in terms of the style of, of how you speak to them. Do you have to change the way that you speak in order for someone to understand you? You know, certainly if there are language barriers or anything like that. Really fantastic things. If you're setting yourself outside of your comfort zone, you know, you might be working in teams with people you've never met before. So how does that sort of develop those um, transferable skills? There's some really good ones. There may even be the opportunity to take on a leadership role if you're working in teams. So again, it really does depend on what it is that you're doing. But as important really about it is, is the recognition of what you're developing as a skill. And then at a later stage, it will be OK. So how do I now articulate how important that skill is to a potential employer or even if you're looking to go into further study after your first degree? Back to you, Laurie. Brilliant, thank you. So you spoke a, a bit there about the whole range of different opportunities that you could get involved in and how they can develop different elements of maybe your experience can go on to evidence or even the raw skills you could fill out. I'd just like to pick up on that a bit and talk about some of the ways you can get involved in volunteering if you're not already involved. So at the Students' Union, we have a volunteering portal and we link out with loads of local providers who offer a whole range of different opportunities. So from stuff such as volunteering in schools to maybe working with animals or maybe working just within the local community on one-off projects. So there's so much you can get involved in. And to find out all about that, you would have to head to leicesterunion.com forward slash volunteering. But we have got a question here about, can I still get involved in volunteering even if I can't do it on a regular basis? So for that one, I'm going to hand over to Michelle to talk a little bit, bit about the university's opportunities. Thanks, Lauren. Um, yes, absolutely. Um, it's the best thing about volunteering is it fits around you. So you can do um, an hour, you can do five hours, you can do something more regularly. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity there for you uh, to get involved in, in different things. Um, and Lauren kind of uh, you know asked the question about the types of volunteering opportunities. There's things around like practical volunteering, which are things like going, as Karen mentioned, going into allotments and gardens, potentially even going into schools actually, uh, and kind of supporting uh, children there and different activities that you can do. Um, there's things like raising awareness, um, fundraising um, for kind of local charities or local organisations that are really close to you. Um, but yeah, there's a few different things. Um, just in Leicester as well, you can get involved in events, for example, uh, supporting different events, um, media, um, and also administration and social media as well. So there's a few different things there for you. Cool. Brilliant. Thank you, Michelle. So thinking about some of the opportunities that are available here on, on campus and at Leicester, and you said there's a whole wealth of them. Do you feel that students need experience previously volunteering to get involved in them or is it something they can start out straight away and pick up new when they arrive here at Leicester or maybe even at a later year during their time studying with us? I'll go back to Michelle for that one as well. Yes, yeah, so no previous experience is needed at all. Um, you can just turn up. What they're looking for is people who are reliable, who are friendly, who want to get involved um, and who are like that, really out kind of who are outgoing as well if you if you if you know just to, to kind of interact with people um equally actually the main thing is even if you're not confident necessarily and you want to make friends it's a great opportunity to do that too um so yeah you do absolutely don't need any experience um it's a great um way to kind of fill skills gaps that you might not be able to gain so some skills you might not be able to necessarily gain um through your studying through other things that you're doing around the university so this is a great way to, to be able to kind of identify some of those skills um, to add on there as well. Well, brilliant, thank you. Um, so that leads quite nicely onto another question we've had through and I'll pick that one up. So it's about if I can't, if I'm not sure if I can commit to doing volunteering, what type of roles can I do? So just building on Michelle's answer there, whenever you're looking to volunteer, it's really important you can commit to whatever you're outlining and, and when we work for external organisations, they are understandable that being a student, you have a lot of pressures and those can change. But it's really important you're honest with yourself and the organisation you work with, with on what you will be able to deliver. Now, if you do have a maybe quite a packed schedule, and um, as I said, our external organisations understand your students and obviously the university, when they're putting on opportunities, will make sure they can fit around your timetable. So there is a lot you can get involved in as one off opportunities 
Also, if you go onto our volunteering portal, you'll be able to liaise directly with the organiser and the provider and see what you can do to fit with what they need, but also with what you're able to deliver. So I wouldn't let it put you off if you're worried that, you know what, I can't commit for a couple of weeks or six months. I can only commit maybe for one or two, one or two days, one or two hours over a two week period, whatever it may be. You'll be able to find an opportunity that suits you as long as you're upfront with what you're able to do and what you're able to give to that organisation. Because as a volunteer, you're going to be a very, very valuable asset. So it's important that you're able to deliver for them and equally they, they find the right opportunity for you. So when Michelle was speaking there, she was talking about some of the skills you might gain from volunteering or some of the qualities that maybe a volunteer has, that ability to demonstrate commitment, that friendliness, that adaptability. So I'll go over to Karen for this question, which is if a student is volunteering, how best would they be able to evidence them skills to a future employer on their CV or even during an interview? Thanks, Lauren. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a really crucial question, because I think sometimes from my experience of, of student appointments, um, very often students tend to sort of um, obviously very modest, but tend not to give volunteering always the credit that it deserves. If you're talking about it on your CV as an example, give it a volunteering section. You know, not everybody volunteers. It is a, a most wonderful thing because you are doing something for somebody else and you're not getting paid for it. Now, in an employer's eyes, you know, that really does show that you're prepared to do something because maybe you have a real genuine interest, but you're prepared to put yourself out there and you're prepared to do something for someone else. Now, there is obviously the altruistic feeling that we get, you know, we feel quite good about what we're doing when we're volunteering, but you are genuinely doing it for someone else. So give it its own section. And in the same way that you might talk about your part time job, your internship, don't just always think about the, the duties of the role, as it were. If I'm looking at a CV, I don't want to see your job description. I want to know how you did it. I want to know how you communicated with those people. Be a little bit brave. Say you were successful in achieving that, you know, whatever the goal was that you successfully worked in a team. So it, it can have as much prominence as you want, and it's just being aware that it is a really, really valuable experience to have on your CV and to give it the credit that it's due. So even for people who work perhaps, you know, in charity shops, yes, it is about making sure the clothes are on the rail and there are, you know, there are products to sell, but you're still talking to customers. You're still giving them an experience of your shop and the charity itself. If I have a good time when I'm buying something, I will tell my friends, I will come back. And again, you know, if you're working, if you're into a kind of a business environment or even public sector, pretty much any sector, there will generally be people, you know, you will be wanting to portray an image of what that organisation is about, what you're about. So lots and lots of really great things you can include. Equally, when you're talking about volunteering in an interview, really think about that story that you're telling you know how did you do something if it's working with diverse audiences if it's working with people you know are vulnerable you know what what were the kind of um the sort of your behaviors towards them you know the empathy that you might have showed them and um, just the interactions that you had you know give it that story and, and really bring it to life um, because i think it, it is incredibly valuable and, and employers do recognize that does that answer the question you think, Lauren? Yeah, I think I think that answers it perfectly. Um, and it actually leads us on to another question we've got here. So you spoke about some of the different sectors, some of our graduating students or maybe even students who want to find part time work along along with studying might be looking to go into. If a student was to get involved in volunteering, what sort of doors could that open? What sort of sectors? could a student use their experience to, to, to go and get involved in? And Karen, I'll hand back to you, but Michelle, if you do want to answer on this one as well, please do. Yeah, I mean, you know, certainly if you're looking to go into things like public sector, so whether that's local government, um, central government, if you're looking to do things like the civil service, but also all the heritage sector, so your museums, your art galleries, your national parks, 
lots of environmental organisations. You know, there, there is a huge span of sectors that you can go into. I think one thing to, to bear in mind often when we talk about volunteering is generally volunteering is for, you know, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but volunteering is generally for charities and not for profit organisations. So if a company asks you to volunteer, it kind of technically isn't. So it's just being aware that it is usually not you know, if you want to go into the charity sector, which we know has been crushed due to the pandemic. If you're wanting to look to go into that, it's how you understand where people are either having to generate their own money, maybe through grants, through things like fundraising. But also if you're looking at things like local government or the heritage sector, you know, there might be pots of money that come in elsewhere. And it's quite a different sort of environment from maybe working for a bank, for instance, or working for an engineering company where, you know, that is much more about the kind of the product cycle in a lot of ways. Um, so maybe it's more kind of towards what we kind of maybe unhelpfully call services, um, but certainly those kind of environments. You know, fantastic stuff. But as I said, for volunteering, the qualities and the skills that you are showing about yourself will be applicable to all employers, really. They'll be interested in that. Brilliant. Yeah, I would definitely um, just kind of continue on from what you said there, Karen. Certainly, if you're looking to get into the third sector, if you're looking to get in the voluntary sector, volunteering is a great way to do that because not only will you be developing them skills, but you will evidence you are able to work within a charity organisation if that's what career you're looking to pursue. And of course, like anything, it's a great way to network and meet people within that sector who may be able to act as a mentor to you or maybe might even be, you know, able to make you aware of jobs that are available and potentially get you that professional start within that sector. So if I use an example, us as a students union are a charity and a lot of the staff that work within the students union all have previous experience volunteering whilst at uni or in different organisations. So whilst you've got this opportunity here, it's perfect um, at the University of Leicester to really get involved in a whole breadth of volunteering opportunities. And I would just remind those of those students who are watching who are part of our sports and societies, if you're a committee member, that's absolutely volunteering as well. And all these skills we're talking about that you can gain, that Karen's talking about how you can evidence on your CV, that's all absolutely skills you're developing. So bear that in mind as you're going through your journey as a committee member, as a Students' Union volunteer, and start engaging with our career service and understanding how you can evidence them skills when you do progress on to the next steps in your journey. Ooh, um, so we've got a question here which is I'm in my final year and so is it too late for me to get involved in volunteering? Michelle, if you're happy, I'll throw that question out your way. Definitely, it's never too late to, to get involved in volunteering. You've just got to look for the right opportunities that you want to get involved in and just go for them. It will always look great on a CV, no matter when you're updating at your CV as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, obviously if you can do it, um, if you've got the opportunity to do it earlier, great, but not everyone does. Um, certainly if you're in your kind of I say your first or second years you've got things like the Leicester Award that I can contribute to but don't think that because you're later on that you're actually it's not going to be you know useful to you it also helps you um, in life um, later on as well it's not just about necessarily um, what the employers will uh, think of it as well but also I think just um, in terms of how that will help you in your life uh, going forward in any of the roles that you have um, in any of the, the groups or teams or groups of people that you work with as well. So, yeah. Brilliant. So we've got a couple more questions here about how you can get involved in volunteering on campus and also are there expenses to cover that and help you with, with taking up your volunteering? I will once again go to Michelle, but before I hand over, I would just stress and come back to the point I came to earlier, which is Students Union volunteering, there is so much to get involved in. We couldn't necessarily, we couldn't talk about with the opportunities on this chat. There is just such a breadth and the, the way to find all of them and get involved in them would be go to the Students Union website and clicking on the opportunities tab and the volunteering drop down. What I would say as well, and I believe it's another question we have come through, is that if you look on there and you know, you've been involved in volunteering previously, or maybe you're really passionate and motivated by a cause, and you can't see the volunteering opportunity that's right for you on there, 
We also have opportunities for you to start your own volunteering project. So you can start your own student group or you can come and have a conversation with our dedicated team in the SU. We can then work with local organisations to help you to start up your entire own volunteering project. And we have great examples such as our Homeless Outreach Society, which started from one student just wanting to make a positive difference in the Leicester community. And now they support various organisations in getting whether that's practical support to homeless people in Leicester um, or whether that's connecting them to other organisations that can help them. So, so much for you to get involved in and so much for you to start up and be a positive change maker all on your own. So if you are watching and thinking about getting involved in volunteering, definitely take that step, come and have that conversation. And I'm really excited to see what you do and what you do next. So on that, I will hand back over to Michelle so she can talk a bit about how you can get involved in other volunteering opportunities. And also if you'd like to pick up the question around expenses as well. Yeah, so um, I'll, I'll tackle the question about um, expenses first of all. So yes, we do reimburse if the opportunity is more than a 30 minute uh, walk away. We'll reimburse you for your travel for that. Also, many organisations, there are some uh, organisations actually that do cover your expenses as well. I think if, if you know that you're going to be travelling from further afield, then I think it's having that conversation with the organisation or with us um, just to let us, make, let us know and make us aware. Um, and then, yeah, we can look at the options for you. So, so don't worry too much about that. And um, we have in the past put on coaches if it's further away as well. Um, and if we were to do that, then we'd obviously inform you where to meet and things like that. So you don't have to worry too much about that aspect of it. Um, in terms of some of the um, opportunities, so at the moment, we're just trying to work out what we can do for the start of term. Um, previously, what's worked really well is actually going to schools and running activities um, to keep kind of children kind of learning and uh, really excited. Um, and I've mentioned before that there, there's an allotment that actually they take the children out to. And that's one of the opportunities of working with a few schools actually at the moment. Um, the Friends of Welford, which is Welford Cemetery, which is just across um, from the university campus on Mayor's Walk. Um, they're looking for students to run tours of the actual uh, cemetery. We've got some really keen, famous people in there, apparently, <laughs> um, which I'm keen to know. So um, you never know, I might go on one of the tours and see one of you there if you're, if you're, one of the, if you're volunteering there. Um, but yeah, um, when you come up to Diwali and um, things like some of the more bigger celebrations, we do tend to run kind of activities, arts and crafts, and some of those do get then either given to people or um, potentially used to, um, like for instance, we've done it before with it, given it to care homes and things like that. That might be a little different this year in terms of what we can do in with that, um, but that's certainly something we'd like to consider once everything's a little bit um, more eased down, but yeah. Um, again, you can have a look at our Leicester Student Life social media pages. Um, for opportunities. There's also online volunteering opportunities that you can do. You can do that from the comfort of your own home, um, whether you're staying in a, when you come with in a kind of accommodation here or whether you're further afield. Um, there's definitely opportunities that you, that you can do as well. So Leicester Life, uh, Leicester Student Life social media channels, um, but also again through the Student Union Volunteering Portal. Brilliant, thank you. Um, even on here, unfortunately, you're not going to avoid the words COVID-19. So we have had a question through with regards to COVID-19. Uh, this student has shared that they, they want to volunteer, but COVID-19 has unfortunately stopped their plans. What else can they do? What else can they get involved in? Again, Michelle, you'd be happy to pick that one up. Yeah, so I think um, there's different, if you go, like I said, if you have a look online, online's your best bet, uh, your, your best kind of opportunity really to have a look at all the types of online opportunities. It could be even writing to people that at this time, there's a lot of people who are really quite isolated and lonely um, and there's different organisations um, doing this kind of, I say pen pal, but it's done kind of over, the, uh, over email or it could even be done over the phone as well, where you're just bringing kind of supporting people, providing that kind of friendly um, care. Um, Vons, uh, voluntary Action at Leicester, um, they, if you go onto their website as well, they're promoting some of the great opportunities that they've got for those who aren't able to actually go in person uh, to get involved as well. Um, depending on your areas as well, if you're not based in Leicester but you're based elsewhere, there's usually some uh, type of organisation there that has a lot of those opportunities there as well for you to kind of seek out. Um, but yeah, we, if you, again, if you look at our social media channels as well, we're constantly trying to put out different opportunities that we're finding. Um, and some of them quite unique um, and one off or some of them a little bit more regular again. Brilliant. Thank you, Michelle. So, yeah, I would definitely echo that. There's still a load going on. I think one of the nicer things we've seen during this period is how much people have been motivated to help others. 
whether that's through some of the formal opportunities like Michelle discussed, or even just volunteering in their local community and you know maybe going out and get, getting shopping for a, an elderly citizen who can't get about themselves. So I would remind you that volunteering hasn't always got to be that formal volunteering. There's so much you can do informally in your local community that not only does good, but also boosts your CV and develops some skills you can go on to evidence. What we'll do, we've got a couple more questions, then we'll round it up um, and give Michelle and Karen both an opportunity to add anything else that I want to, and obviously signpost on to where you can continue to get support with your careers um, or even continue to get involved in some of them opportunities. We've got a really nice question to round it up, and it simply is, what do employers think of volunteering? So Karen, do you want to go? Yeah, thanks, Lauren. Uh, they love it. I mean, how, how can you not, really? You know, as I said before, it's about you putting yourself out there and, you know, just picking up on, on what both um, Lauren and Michelle have said, you know, actually even starting up your own charity or sort of kind of volunteering project, you know, doing some fundraising, that it is a two way street and it benefits both. Um, and there aren't that many things in life that always happens. And I think if you can show to employers that there is that side of you that is really about people, because certainly the pandemic has shown us that people are really at the heart of a lot of what is happening. Um, and not just in terms of obviously the, the, the disease itself, but you know, that brings together of communities helping those that are most vulnerable because we might not always get it from where we expect. So I think if you can show that you have given your time, just going on to what Lauren was saying earlier, she's absolutely right about, you know, making sure that you don't overcommit to what you can do. In some ways, there is merit in if you can do some kind of volunteering that's continuous, because again, it does show commitment. Mm. Um, but obviously, if that's not within your capability because of your studies, which obviously have to come first, then even those one off events can be brilliant just for really kind of showing that actually I'm prepared to do something that's, you know, out of my comfort zone, you know, sort of like makes me stand out a little bit more. Anything, Michelle? Back to Lauren. Yeah, Michelle, if you'd like to add anything on, that'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's that thing of um, not everyone is the most confident people. You don't need to be confident to do volunteering at all. And I think I just that's the kind of one of the key messages I do want to say out there. I've seen many a times in appointments and, you know, students are a, a little unsure. Um, you, they're in, they can do them in smaller groups, sometimes there's bigger groups. It's all up to you really as to the type of volunteering that you want to do and the reason. The motivations are so different. It could be for skills, it could be to try something new. It could just be to continue something, especially um, uh, that you've done elsewhere that actually you find locally that you want to, to continue and do. And like Karen said, during this time, so many people have got involved to help their community. There's no reason uh, particularly why you feel, if, if you feel that you can continue it, that you shouldn't uh, at least try and look for those opportunities to do so. I think it's a great thing that's brought everyone together. The, the one thing I'd actually just um, kind of add to that. So Karen mentioned, obviously, that you develop uh, transferable skills that you can add onto your CV. And one thing I would say as well is just when you're adding those skills on there, start to think about how then that then tailors to that particular role that you're applying for. Um, because things like um, communication, for example, that you can develop in one way could be quite different um, to, uh, to another company. So it's not just a case of just putting volunteering on there, but actually starting to think, well, actually, what am I trying to show this employer that I've gained from that skill? Um, and so that would definitely be one of the things um, I would say. Um, we have had questions in the past about um, DBS checks uh, and things like that. Um, a lot of organisations do these and they do these for free. Um, so um, if you are, if that is something that is needed, the organisation will kind of let you know about that um, as well. I mean, here at the university, we don't do them just because of the, because it is the one off um, opportunities. But I don't know actually if the students union um, have any other further advice on that as well. Great, great. thank you, Michelle. To pick up on the DBS point, um, we can do DBS checks through the Students' Union, but largely, as Michelle said, with the providers we work with, they'll be able to provide them for you if needed. Um, and obviously, with some of the activity in the school-based activity Michelle's team puts on, they're not always needed depending on the level, level of um, supervision provided by the school. So if you think you need a DBS check, certainly come into the Students' Union. We'll see if it's necessary for your 
um, opportunity? And if so, we'll see if the organisation can provide them or ourselves. Definitely love the points that both of you were given in there. And I think a point Michelle made is really important. Absolutely, every employer loves to see someone who's volunteered. It shows what you're passionate about. It shows, you know, the skills you've developed. It shows that you're willing to give your time to help others. But you also want to make it easy for the employer. Don't just put I volunteered here. Definitely understand what skills are they looking for. Drill down into how you develop them skills. And if you're not sure what skills you've developed, go and speak to the organisation that's um, that you're volunteering for. These people will have been progressed in their career and I'm sure very happy to help you understand them skills and help you evidence them. And of course, we'll come back to it and I'm sure we're going to go to the screen in a second, which is all about the upcoming sessions. But career support here at the university is brilliant and there's opportunities for you to get one to one appointments, access online resources and really help you tailor and develop your CV, develop your interview skills. So you're drawing out the most of the fantastic experiences you've gained while studying here at Leicester. So we will wrap it up there because we have gone slightly over. But before I do, I'll just hand over to Karen initially if there's anything additional you want to add and then Michelle yourself. I think it's, it, as, as you pointed out, Lauren, you know, it's a, a difficult time and those opportunities are out there. Um, I often say to students at the moment, it is about being a little bit creative. So if you can, if there are courses that you're particularly in, you know, interested in or groups of people or animals or whatever, um, you know, if you feel capable, just ask, ask questions, talk to people. You know, there might not be the same types of volunteering opportunities out there at the moment, certainly if it involves groups of people. Again, you know, Michelle said there are things that you can do from home. Um, so I think really it's just about getting out there and giving it a try. Michelle? I would definitely repeat that message of asking. Um, just you can either come to us here at the university or the Civil Students Union. Um, there's just going to be there's going to be changes with the kind of the opportunities and they're ever changing if I'm honest with you. So there's always something new, something exciting to do. Um, so don't be worried that you don't know what you, that, what you want to do as well, actually, because sometimes sometimes actually we're able to advise from I guess like sometimes our own experiences. I guess like um, Lauren said about the Students' Union, a lot of their exact officers have actually done volunteering before. So it's a great opportunity uh, to find out there. Um, also speak to your peers um, as well, actually, because they've probably done volunteering in many other ways, not necessarily through the university, um, but either previously for school um, or in, in other means as well. So you'll be surprised what you can find. Brilliant, thank you. And, and definitely, as Michelle said, there's going to be loads of exciting volunteering going on next year and during the freshers and welcome periods are going to be a perfect time to find out about them. So make sure you're following all that social media Michelle mentioned earlier, as well as your students union social media. Firstly, I just want to say thank you to both our panellists um, absolutely brilliant. And I'm sure you gave some great advice there that, that the students are really going to benefit from. So thank you for that. If you do have any questions today that we didn't get a chance to answer, um, and you, or you just simply like a bit more advice, please do reach out to the careers team and you can book one-to-one -one appointments and, and you can, there'll be a link on screen or you can send an email to studentservices at le.ac.uk. These sessions have been going on, so you can get on YouTube and view the old ones and view all the different topics we've been talking about. And there's also more coming up. So if you head to leicesterunion.com forward slash career support, you can find out about future sessions and start thinking about your, your questions ahead of time. Um, but yeah, that is everything from us. What's really final for us to say is, is good luck. Good luck on whatever the next step of your journey is. And if you are returning to study next year, we're looking forward to seeing you next year. But thank you. See you later.